baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. I, I got all inspired. I told Brother Mason, I said, that'd be good for us to sing. <laughs> I, I felt excited about clapping my hands and stomping my feet and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to invite the ushers at this time to get ready to receive the offering. Praise the Lord. And Brother Anthony has a couple of songs that uh, will direct our during this time. Praise, praise the praise. Lord. While they're doing that, we're going to give you a chance to praise the Lord while they're getting ready. Who would like to praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Will there be another one? Whoa. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory. yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. I think it'd be in order at this time to have Brother Anthony come around and make a little announcement. If you don't mind, Brother Anthony, would you come make the announcement we talked about this afternoon? Hallelujah, hallelujah, concerning some new things for the band and things of that nature. Just before he directs the Those of you who have not been playing in the orchestra, please be at practice Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We have brand new music, different music than we've ever played before. And please, if you're going to play in the orchestra, you need to come at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. If not, you're going to be left way, way behind. So please, be here.
comes, I want to uh, encourage all of you that are in the orchestra to uh, get back in and start playing. I think we have something wonderful here. We have something unique that uh, other churches would like to have, and we don't want to lose what we have. I say we don't want to lose what we have. <clears throat> Praise God. If God has blessed us and brought us to a place, given us something that we can do for Him, we don't want to take it lightly. Brother Anthony talking about the orchestra being invited to play at this Hallelujah Festival before the governor and lieutenant governor and all that. That's all uh, very good. Let me tell you, and, and I'm proud of that. I really am. I think it's an honor. But every Sunday night, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, let me invite you to come and pray be uh, play before the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Let me come invite you to come and play before the holy angels. Amen. And the saints of the Most High God. Every Sunday night, prepare yourself, practice up, uh, so that you can raise that horn and play before the great God of heaven. Hallelujah. While he takes note of, uh, of your talent and your effort, your energy. And it's, uh, it's a great, great blessing. I know that uh, some of you are, some of you have new babies, some of you have colds, some of you have all of this. But I think that that at this point we should be trying to put it all back together now and and uh, trying to get in here and and uh, get practice back up and become a part of it again i hope that all of you will if your instrument's not working let's uh, quickly see brother bradford about it and 
Let's try to get those instruments in the shop and get them working. Don't wait until a way after a while. I say, why aren't you playing? Well, my horn's out of out of order. Uh, so uh, let's let's see about that right now, and uh, try to be ready uh, to practice stuff and ready. If you can't be, if you're not ready by Tuesday night, well, come and listen to the music, and in the meantime, be getting your horn ready. Uh, I'd like to see that whole orchestra full again. Uh, the, the, the work of God, the Bible says the kingdom of God uh, is from victory unto victory. And the church that Jesus built, according to the prophet Isaiah, said of the increase of his government and reign, there would be no end. And there's something uh, ungodly about backing up. Amen. I say there's something ungodly about backing up. Praise God. If God has helped us to have a good orchestra, we don't want it to start fading away we want it to grow we want it to be strong amen but each one of you have to get in and make the dedication and do your part the leadership is doing their part brother bradford brother anthony is working hard they're ready they're willing and uh, very capable and uh, so let's us uh, all do our part so i call on you unless you have some physical problem that you just absolutely cannot play your horn anymore uh, then i'm calling on you to pick it up practice up and uh, get back and carry your part of the load. And uh, Brother Bradford's going to be starting some new classes, uh, renewing uh, some classes next week. Everybody knows that. Okay, Brother Bradford will be giving you the details this next weekend. Uh, but uh, if you want to do something for the Lord, there's no finer place anywhere that you can work for the Lord than right here. Uh, we, we'll train you, we'll help you every way that we can that you can be something for the lord for the glory of the name of jesus amen uh I may also mention i hadn't talked to brother bradford brother anthony about it this is ginger yet but uh very very soon in the very near future we're going to have a full saturday night a full saturday night of just music and singing on a saturday night uh we'll let it start early and go late just a full Saturday night of music and singing. Our music, our singers, some visiting singers, and uh, just a, a happy time of worshiping the Lord with uh, good singers, good uh, get together. I am not interested in hiring professional singers to come in and put on a singing for us. I'm not interested in that. Uh, but uh, there are people that whose singing is a blessing to us. Some of these singers that we enjoy at Labor Day, and uh, we all wish we could have them back. We're gonna round them up for one big Saturday night and uh, bring them all in here together. And we're gonna have one big night of uh, happy Holy Ghost singing and music real, real soon on Saturday night. Would y'all like that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now we're still gonna have church the next day. I mean, that's not gonna take place on Sunday. But uh, I think we ought to have a big one. I mean, start it early and go late. And just have a hallelujah big time. And just try to think of everybody that you wish could come back and, and sing again. And we'll just try to round them all up. And, and everybody be at our very best and do it right. And God will be glorified in it. Hallelujah. And we'll worship the Lord with it. God bless the senior choirs. They come and sing. Sing to the glory of the Lord. Let God have his glory.
doing for the King? Have you really given everything to the one who gave his all for you? For you. Don't you be satisfied just to know that the Lord has saved your soul. Have you forgotten what you need to do? To do, just take up your cross and follow Jesus. I know sometimes the road is so long, and I know sometimes you feel like you can't go on. You can make it, you just take up your cross. Jesus, oh, just take up your cross. He said every day the same. Oh, Lord, I know sometimes the world is so long. And I know sometimes you feel like you can't go on. You can make it. Just take up your cross. Hallelujah. And follow Jesus. Take up your cross. Each and every day. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Count the cost. Take up the cost. because we know we've been delivered. Is that right? Jesus healed the blind men, made him see. The demons out the men of Gadaree. He healed the leper too. He made the lame brand new. But hope back in our hopeless life. I testify to you. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. 
The whole devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hands of the Lord. Healed the blind man, made him see Cast demons out, the man of Galilee He healed the leper too He made the lame brand new They put hope back in a hopeless life I testify to you, I've been delivered I've been delivered Oh, the devil had on me He ain't got no more I've been delivered I've been delivered Delivered by the hands of the Lord. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered by the hands of the Lord. He saved the man. I know this close to death. He gave a ball with asthma back his breath. The best miracle to see is when Jesus sets you free. You know when it sets you free, you know you're free indeed. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hands of the Lord. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hands of the Lord. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hands of the Lord. Jesus killed the blind man, made him see. Cast demons out the man of Gattery. He healed the leper too. He made the lame brand new. They brought hope back in a hopeless life. I testify to you, I've been delivered. Oh, have you been delivered? Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hand of the Lord I've been delivered I've been delivered Oh, the devil had on me He ain't got no more I've been delivered I've been delivered Delivered by the hand of the Lord He saved a man I know this close to death He gave a ball with asthma back his breath Oh, that miracle to see is when Jesus sets you free. You know when it sets you free, you know you're free indeed. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Oh, the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Delivered by the hand of the Lord. Delivered by the hand of the Lord. Delivered by the hand of the Lord I've been delivered Been delivered Oh, the devil had on me He ain't got no more I've been delivered I've been delivered Delivered by the hand of the Lord Hallelujah Lame 
same man sat outside the gate banging off from those that in burden. Now Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. Now Peter said, silver and gold, have I none but such I have I give unto thee. Right then the Spirit touched the man, he leaped to his feet, he said, Look what God's done for me. The lame man sat outside the gate, begging on some ghost that entered in. Now Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, have I none but such I have, I give unto thee. But then the spirit touched the man, he leaped to his feet, he said, Look what God's done for me. Of darkness and sin, I had no hope, no peace of mind. Though my sins were well discarded, He washed them white as snow and opened my blinded eyes. Now my soul will rejoice since I made God my choice. That joy keeps everything that's within. Can't you see my name been written down in the last book of life? Can't you see what God's done for me?
bound by chains, of darkness and sin, I had no hope, no peace of mind. So my sins are red as scarlet, he was the white as snow, and opened my blinded eyes. Now my soul will rejoice, since I made God my choice, that joy beats everything that's within. Can't you see my name's been written down in the Lamb's book of life? Can't you see what God's done for me? He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me, oh, just in time, I'm gonna praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time, I'm gonna praise His name. He saves just the same. Come help me praise Him with what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, He touched my mind. He saved me, so just in time, I'm gonna praise His name. He say He's just the same. Come help me praise Him, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, He touched my mind. Praise His name. He said He's just the same. Come now, we praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. I want to say it again. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord.
Y'all can all just stay right where you are just a minute. The Apostle Paul writing to the church of Romans, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What he was simply saying is, I invite you and implore you to offer your body on display. Offer your life for observation. Hold out your experience and what God has done for you for the whole world to see. So that everybody can observe you and understand what the will of God is and what good things God can do in a life that is yielded to him. Let your life be set on example. Let everybody see, be on exposition, and let everybody know this is what God can do for a person. He says, I beseech you that you would offer yourself for such a service to the Lord. Every now and then someone with a, a house that is run down and looking ugly, it's an eyesore in the community, Everybody sees it and knows it needs help. They will get an invitation or an offer from an aluminum or vinyl siding company. We will come in and completely give your house a facelifting. All new exterior. We'll trim it out real pretty. If you'll let us put a sign out in the front that says this job was done, this renovation was done by such and such a home improvement company and give the phone number recommending our work they like a house that is visible on the side of a main street a house that everybody has noticed really needed some improvement and they say we'll do that for you free if you'll just let that house stand there with our name and that's what the apostle paul said Hallelujah. said god did a great work in your life and he'd like to put a sign up saying look who did this amen this is by the power of the gospel Amen. The Holy Ghost did this work. The name of Jesus did this work. When these folks started going to church and serving God and got baptized in Jesus' name, amen, look what the Lord has done for them. Hallelujah. Oh, what a testimony. What a testimony. What an impact that this can make. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's why the Bible said you don't light a candle and put it under a bushel, but you put it on a candlestick so that it can shine. A city that's set up on a hill cannot be hid. Let me tell you, God did not save us so that we could sneak through this world without ever anybody finding out that we were different. He didn't save us so that we could sneak through this world and nobody ever find out that we were Pentecost. No one ever found out that we had the Holy Ghost. Amen. He saved us to set us on a hill. Hallelujah. So we will say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, there ought to be something about us every day. Amen. That the people says, God's done a great work there. God has performed a great miracle in that life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't subdue your testimony. Don't resent the fact that God's made a difference in your life. Hallelujah, let it be of the most glowing aspect of your existence. Hallelujah, Jesus made a happy person out of me. Jesus took my sins away and set me free. I have a song in my heart. I have a happiness in my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah! You ought to sing it. Hallelujah! Well, look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done. Well, has He healed my body? Hallelujah! He saved me. Just in time, I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Come help me praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me oh, just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Come help me praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Oh, just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Come help me praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. I was bound by chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope, no peace of mind. Everybody, my sins are red as scarlet. He blessed the whitest snow, and He opened my blinded eyes. Now my soul can rejoice since I made God my choice. That's a piece of the thing that's the same. Can't you see my name's been written down in the land's book of life? Can't you see what God's so on me? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Hallelujah. Each day he's just the same. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. The lame man sat outside the gate, begging on some days that enter. Happy all the time. They came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. He said, Silver and gold, have I none but such I have, I've given to thee. But then the Spirit touched the man, he leaped to his feet, he said, Look what God's done for me. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me, Lord, just in time, I'm gonna praise his name, he saved me just the same, come help me praise him, look what the Lord has done. Good work, good work. Amen. The Bible says God will work who will let. He's looking for somebody that he can call out and do something good for here tonight. Amen. Over and over and over again, God does good things for those who will let him. Hallelujah. Thank God for the day that he began to work on our life. 
Where would we be if God hadn't got a hold to us? Begin to do a work in our life. Oh, friend, listen, if you're here tonight, amen, and there's something missing, Jesus can put it all together for you. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can take out the bad part, amen, and put his holy presence and his yes, grace hallelujah. and goodness in its place. Yes, can fill that emptiness with his glory. Hallelujah. Give you power. Give you joy. Put his anointing in your life. Put that resurrection in there so that when hallelujah. this life is over, you'll be caught away to be with him. Hallelujah. What could we say? Uh, we don't have enough words to adequately recommend the Lord to you. Hallelujah. We just would like to present to you all of these miracles. Look what the Lord has done for all of these yes, people. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. And he'll do the same for you tonight. And I encourage you to you. give God a chance to work his will in your life. There are things that you cannot do for yourself. You cannot, uh, you cannot lift yourself up by your own bootstraps. There are things that only God can take care of in your life. From the 59th chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 59 and 1, I'm happy to see all of you in church. Our visitors welcome you. God bless you. Just going to preach to you just a little, little bitty while. And uh, I, I, want to, I want to go ahead and give the altar call right now and tell you that uh, when we read the scripture to you and uh, ask the Lord to bless it, at any time, then, the altar is open, and if you need God and you're not ashamed to admit your need of God, feel free to make your way to the altar and begin to repent. There's nobody here so bad but what God can save them, and there's nobody here so good that you can save your own self. Amen. Everybody here needs saving. They need God to save them. And so I encourage you to turn to the Lord in repentance. Let Him wash your sins away. Fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you peace and joy in your heart. Make a new creature out of you. Isaiah 59 and 1. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Let's pray. Jesus, help us tonight. That in a little while we'd be able to leave something from your word with this people. Something that would help us, God, to go forth greatly encouraged, Lord, every day to try to plant seeds of truth and be an inspiration and a blessing. And, and leave an example and a good word of testimony for the grace and cause of God. I pray for those that are here without truth in their heart, without salvation and peace in their life, that you'd draw them and call them and bring them to repentance tonight to save them. Help us all, Lord Jesus, that before we stand in your presence, God, that we'd have our life in order according to your plan, and we'd not stand empty-handed, but when you come, you'd find us working in your kingdom, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. Praise God. I want to encourage you again by telling you that all the Lord is looking for is somebody that will help him get the job done. God has what this world needs. He loves every lost soul. He wants them to be saved. The blood has already been shed to pay their penalty. The, the death of Jesus Christ is sufficient to take every man's sins and transgression away. It will not make God tired or, uh, or weary uh, to forgive every lost sinner's sins tonight all at one time it would not make God weary because you see almost 2,000 years ago he went ahead and paid the price for it and it's just simply there for us to obey him and come surrendering and repenting and asking in Jesus name uh, so you don't have to wonder whether God is ready uh, it's already been determined and uh, foreplanned that if you would repent of your sins come to God in repentance that uh, your sins would be forgiven and taken care of. So the only question is whether, number one, whether you get the message, whether somebody tells you about this good news, uh, that it's available to you, and then once it's made available to you and you understand that it is yours and you can have it, 
then the only other thing, the only other question is, will you make that move and will you repent of your sins and will you come to God and leave your life of sin and come to God for uh, forgiveness and cleansing? Amen. One of the prophets said, stand ye in the way, see and ask for the old path wherein is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Uh, so it's simply a matter of finding it and after finding it, then it's a matter of walking in it. And uh, our job, our job, our responsibility is to see to it that uh, you are introduced to the gospel, that you do know about this glorious plan of salvation, that uh, we are able to convince you that Jesus loves you and that he wants to save you. It's not his will that you die lost. Doesn't matter how wicked you've lived and how long you've lived wickedly, it's still not the will of God that you be lost. If you've cursed God every day you live, it's still not the will of God that you die lost and go to hell. It's the will of God that you quit, change and stop it and be sorry for it and ask God's forgiveness so that he can wash that transgression away and erase that off of your record and make you clean and pure and innocent again by the blood of Jesus, his death and his suffering can pay your penalty and you can be clean and innocent. And, uh, and then he can fill you with his great spirit, the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost, and you can go to heaven just as if you've never done anything wrong. So there's nobody so bad that God wants to punish them for their sin. Sin has its own punishment with it. And if a person dies in their sins, they will be lost. There is an eternal hell. There's a literal lake of fire that people who die in their sins will spend their eternity suffering in that lake of fire. But it's not the will of God that anyone go there. That's the place that is reserved for the devil and his angels because they rejected God and, and uh, became enemies of God. Now that is a place reserved for them. And only those people that have come under the influence of the devil and refuse the grace of God Refuse the plan of God, the redemptive plan of God. Only those people will end up in hell. Uh, so it's our job to tell you that you don't have to be lost, but that you will be lost if you don't let Jesus save you. Amen. And uh, to testify to you that all of us were lost. All of us were on our way to devil's hell. Uh, we were in false doctrine. Uh, we were in all kind of religious traditions. And we were bound with different sins and different habits. Uh, we came from every different walk of life that you can imagine. But Jesus Christ made a difference in us. And we stand here tonight to show you what the Lord has done for us. As a testimony to you, amen, that your situation is not unique. But Jesus Christ saves people just like you. Amen. You may feel like that you're pretty good without being saved. Doesn't matter how good you are. Uh, you're still a sinner and you'll still die lost and go to the same hell with the very worst people that's ever lived unless you repent and ask God to change you and forgive you and fill you with the Holy Ghost. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Take the name of the Lord on you in water baptism. Have his blood applied to your soul. Amen. And the Holy Ghost fill your heart. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the new birth experience, the new life. Amen is a resurrection that gets you ready to go to heaven. Now Jesus is looking for you and I and he saves us. He's looking for us to go out in the earth and spread the good news that this is what the Lord has done for us. And this is what he will do for you. In uh, this verse of scripture that I read to you, the Bible says the hand, the arm of the Lord is not shortened. Amen. And his ear is not heavy. Which simply means if you'll call on him and if you will work with him, praise God, God can do a great work. He can reach way out there. You can pray here and he can answer somewhere else. In the book of Ecclesiastes in the 11th chapter, very uh, interesting chapter, it says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. It simply means you have something to give. Share it, spread it, pass it out, let it be known. Amen. The good thing that God has given you, this is what the whole world is needing. One of the uh, disappointing stories in the scripture is uh, Joseph still sitting in prison and uh, the butler enjoying two years of freedom 
and all that Joseph asked of him if he befriended him and the butler was released from prison he said when you get out remember me remember me I'm afraid sometimes that uh, some of us are just as guilty as that butler was the Bible said but he forgot him we're just as guilty as that butler was as soon as God saves us we forget those poor friends of ours that are still back there where we were we forget that they're still miserable and they're still bound and they're still locked in that prison house of sin and we're the one really we're the one that has a key that could go back there and says man listen it's a whole lot better now since i turned to the lord my life is so much better now than when i was partying and running around i mean you can relate to them but in your newfound joy you're so glad to be out and you're so glad to be set free if you're not careful you'll forget that the whole world still lies in darkness cast your bread on the waters we have something to offer uh, that good testimony, that prayer that you pray uh, that doesn't seem to be answered. Just remember, all of this is uh, being invested in uh, this spiritual kingdom. And uh, it is a power against the forces of darkness. It's an investment that you're making in setting souls free. When you pray, when you fast, when you testify, uh, when you pass out tracts, or when you say a good word to somebody about the Lord or talk to them about church or try to show them the love of God. You are investing in souls. You cannot always see the results. I'm afraid sometimes we uh, worry too much about results. We are not responsible for results. Uh, we are responsible to see that we have done our part. Amen. Give a portion. Everyone say give a portion. Hallelujah. How many of you have enough that you can give something to somebody else? Something burning in your soul, something bubbling over in your heart. Hallelujah. Revelation and understanding, a testimony, an excitement, a thrill, a thanksgiving. You have something that you can give to somebody else. Give a portion to seven, also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, and the place where the tree falleth, there it shall lie. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not whether the, what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. He's simply saying, don't try to sit down and analyze the prospects and qualify uh, all of the people that you're going to talk to and decide whether it's going to do any good or not. It's the truth. We find ourselves sometimes trying to decide whether, whether we're doing any good working with this person or witnessing to them. Trying to decide whether it would do any good if we invited them to church. Isn't it true? We try to decide. We really don't know. We really don't understand. And it says, uh, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. You really don't know what's going on uh, behind those closed doors and what torment that person's facing. You really don't know what uh, kind of turmoil is going on in their life. And the scripture here tells us, just go ahead and do what good you can do. And uh, when you've done your best, when you've planted the seed, uh, one, uh, the apostle Paul said, I have planted and Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. Uh, so we don't really, we, we can't sit around counting the uh, results to decide whether we're doing any good. Uh, some of us, it will be eternity before we know how much good we've done. Be willing to keep on sowing and keep on watering uh, without having anything to tally up uh, to put by your name. Be willing to just keep on investing yourself because somehow in all of this, the work of God is done. His arm's not short. You may plant a seed here and uh, many years later, uh, the results be recognized and realized somewhere else. And by then, you may never know that you're the one that uh, really uh, planted that seed and you're the one that really first witnessed to that person. You may never know until eternity. The results is not what we're to be concerned about, but let's be sure that we're letting the world know that Jesus is the answer and he can do something good for them. Said in the morning, sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both alike shall be good. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is uh, for the eyes to behold the sun. 
simply tells us that uh, we're not to try to decide uh, who is worthy of our effort and uh, who would uh, benefit from our testimony, but says just go ahead, just go ahead and sow the seed, just go ahead and leave your testimony, go ahead and pray for him anyway, whether you see it doing any good or not, that's not your problem. You just keep investing some faith in there. You keep putting some love in there. And you keep showing some compassion and some concern. And you keep trying to touch that heart and lay, say a good word for Jesus. Amen. And all of this, me and you and all of us each doing this. Amen. God's going to work in there. And he's going to work his plan and work his way. Because God knows what's going in that person's mind. Hallelujah. He says, Thou knowest not the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Hallelujah. I'm just glad to be a part of this great mystery, even though I don't understand all of it. I don't know how God is working and how God is moving. Amen. But I just want to do my little part and have my little input in it. Amen. I thought of this scripture this afternoon. Uh, you never know what's going on in the minds of people. Uh, a number of years ago, I guess about eight years ago now, I met this family up in Harrisonburg and uh, I visited them a couple of times and got to know them and begin to talk to them about the Lord. And uh, the woman I used to go to church many years ago for a short time and uh, really in their heart they believed the truth but were far away from God. I began to talk to them and begin to pray for them. And when I'd go there, I would pray with them. Both of them smoking cigarettes, a house full of cigarette smoke. And I'd try to talk to them about the Lord. Pardon me. Didn't seem to be getting anywhere. But it didn't seem that anyone else was, uh, was concerned with them. And uh, finally, one morning, way, way in the night, I was out at the ranch and the man called me. Uh, way in the night. And uh, he was uh, at a point of desperation. He said he'd come to the place that uh, he didn't want to live anymore and he was ready to take his life. He didn't say that, uh, but uh, in desperation, I could sense that he had reached a point uh, that he couldn't go any further. But uh, he called me because I had uh, showed an interest in his soul and, and he had me pray for him that night and I did and I talked to him. Then I saw him a few days after that and he told me, he said, you know, uh, Brother Majors, that night I was fixing to take my life. He told me then, he said, if I couldn't have got in touch with you and if you couldn't have helped me some way and gave me some hope, I was going to take my life that night. I couldn't go on any longer. And uh, he says, the fact that you encouraged me that I could be saved and warned me that if I died like I was, that I would be lost forever, uh, it made a difference. Anyhow, I kept working with him and kept working with him. And when I'd go, I'd, I'd go see him and visit with him and talk to him about his soul and, and pray for him. And I requested prayer here in the church for him uh, several times. Anyhow, today, now that's 100 miles from here. And, uh, but the Bible says the arm of the Lord's not short. Amen. God can work. God can work. He can move anywhere. Hallelujah. You can be praying here and somebody gets saved in Atlanta. It might be a week before you even hear about it. And you're the one really that, that got the person stirred up or somewhere else or whatever. It may be longer than that before you hear about it. That doesn't make any difference about that. The main thing is that each one of us is having an input into the souls of men. This afternoon he called me. He said, Brother Majors. He said, guess what? I said, I promised you that I would call you if I, if I got to church and got saved. Well, he said, this morning, I got baptized in Jesus' name. I received the Holy Ghost this morning. And my wife prayed back through the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Both of us now saved. Hallelujah. And we're so happy. Hallelujah. I thought, God. Amen. What a good uh, investment of the little bit of time. Now, I'm not taking full credit for that. God only knows how many people up in that country. I don't know them, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of praying people over that country that's prayed for those neighbors over the years. I don't really know. Amen. But I do know that God let me have a little part of it. And he let me have a good feeling when that man called me. Uh, because if, if I hadn't talked to that man about his soul, he would already be dead in a sinner's grave. Amen. But somehow I was able to touch a little life just simply by testifying and showing the love of God and showing compassion and showing concern. He's a long ways from here. He won't ever come to my church. 
He won't ever add anything to the church that I passed, but that doesn't make any difference. A soul is worth more than a million worlds. Amen. And he just rejoiced, was so glad. He said we went to Brother Bill Cotton's church this morning, said that just something kept leading us and kept drawing us. And said, I just kept on remembering what you kept telling me. Every time you saw me and said, it just kept pushing us. And said, this morning we made the move. And now, amen, we're in church and saved and going to live for the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. That's a second uh, elderly man up there in that area that God has helped us to uh, lead to the Lord just with our little visits there. Uh, it, it just lets us know that whoever you are, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Wherever you meet people, whatever they're doing, whatever kind of people they are, whatever uh, station in life they're in, whatever relationship you have with them, it doesn't matter. Amen. You can let your light shine. You can say a little word. Let them know that Jesus loves them and he's ready to help them. Whatever their needs are, the Lord is there. Jesus will help them. Hallelujah. Because if we stand back and say, well, I don't see much hope there. Amen. Uh, we're, our faith is limiting what God can do. And remember, there was probably a time in all of our life when somebody could have stood back and looked and said, I don't see much hope there. Praise God. But I'm glad somebody prayed for us. And I'm glad that Jesus loved us and he kept on working on us. Amen. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost moved us. And his arm was not short and his ear was not heavy. He was able to hear us and he was able to help us. So I encourage you tonight, do whatever you can to let your light shine. Be a signpost for the Lord, a billboard uh, for the miraculous work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I think every time Brother Joe Palazzola stands up and testifies, amen, that's like a great billboard on the side of the road. Raise the Catholic. Hallelujah. Raise the Catholic and ignorant to the truth. Hallelujah. But now rejoicing in the glorious Holy Ghost wonderful experience. Amen. Let me tell you what Jesus Christ can do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil advertises his sins. The devil will have a big billboard advertising that red man chewing tobacco. But then there's Brother Joe Palazzola says, Whoa, I had red man and red man didn't do it. Amen. But God delivered me from red man. Hallelujah. And gave me peace and joy in my soul. That's something better, something stronger, something more wonderful, something lasting. Hallelujah. Something that can satisfy uh, dope addicts, people bound by drugs. I look in the paper and I see those names of people picked up on drugs and I thank God. Amen. If it had not been for your grace, some of the same people that's in Sunday school here this morning, their names would be on there. Some of the same ones that have happy families now be serving time in Angola for distributing. God is so good. Amen. Don't give up on anybody. Hallelujah. Talk to people and say, I know what you're going through. I know your situation, but God can make a difference in your life. The Lord can make a difference. He can save you. He can set you free. Hallelujah. And you that know the truth and you that are serving God, don't ever, don't ever back up on God. Don't ever slack up on Him in the least. Don't ever move back toward the world. Amen. God delivered us from that pit of sin. We don't want to go back that way. We don't want to move toward the world. We want to get further and further away from it. We don't want the world to put its clammy hands on us. Jesus Christ has set us free and cleansed our life. We don't want the devil to leave his smudgy fingerprints on our life. Amen. Don't play around with what the world can do because the devil would like to bring you back under his control. But if Jesus sets you free, hallelujah, be like a city set up on a hill. Praise God. Say, I'm going to shine for Jesus. I'm going to have a testimony for the Lord. Praise God. I'm going to sing his songs and I'm going to glorify his name. Hallelujah. Mark and I visited in a home this week. And uh, people that I've known since I was just a little child. And while we were there talking about the Lord in the early days of Pentecost here in this town, one of the ladies who was just a teenager then, she said, you know, when the church started up on Main Street across from the picture show, she said, I was just a teenage girl and I used to come out there and stand in front of the church and listen. And she said, I'd look in there and people would be jumping up and down and singing and, uh, and she said, I just listened. And I thought I didn't say it. I thought, yeah, you and your brothers 
used to throw brick bats on top of the church. And y'all used to scream and holler and make fun of us. I didn't say that, but I remembered that. They gave us a bad time. But she, she said, I used to stand out there in the gravel road and look in there and see those people singing and jumping up and down. And I don't know why I said it, but I looked her right in the eyes and I said, deep down in your heart, you want to come right on in there and get with us, didn't you? You wanted to be one of those holy rollers, didn't you? Didn't you deep down in your heart wish that you had the guts to walk on in there, amen, and get what those people had? She dropped her head. She said, I wanted it then, and I've wanted it every day of my life since then. And said, I didn't have the courage. Said, I was so mixed up and so bound up in everything that I was in, and my family was so against it. But she said, I've never admitted this before, but said, for my whole life, I have wished that I had gone in there and got that Holy Ghost and been a holy roller all of my life. She said, as I stand here today, I realize how much I've missed by not having God all these years. Oh, listen, you don't ever know what's living in the heart of that young person, that person that's living wild and making fun of you. I mean, you don't know what's living down inside of them, the longing, the craving of their heart. If they just had somebody to kind of take them by the hand and lead them, I mean, their heart is hungry for the same things you're hungry for. Their soul yearns for that peace of God. They want to go to heaven just like you want to go to heaven. They may be drinking and carousing and doing all those things, but deep down inside, they want to be saved too. Amen? Hallelujah. And if you'll get out there, if you'll feel around a little, and if you'll listen, if you'll, if you'll put your ear to the ground and listen, you'll hear their hungry cry. You'll hear what they're talking about, and you'll know, amen, that deep inside they have a respect for you and for this church, and they'd like to be one of us. They'd like to have what we have. And then, and deep down inside, they know that when the trumpet sounds, amen, that it's going to make a difference. Hallelujah. 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 So I call on you as the Apostle Paul did. Let your light shine. Be an example for Jesus. Let your bodies be a demonstration of how good God can be and what a good work he can do in a human life. Don't hide your candle under a bushel. Don't be ashamed of what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of what the Lord has done for you. Don't be ashamed of what the Lord has done for you. Don't be ashamed to praise and worship the Lord. Don't be ashamed to pray out loud. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's one thing that the First Pentecostal Church of Melville is going to have to get back. Amen. Is their ability to pray out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, uh, if people came up while we were having congregational prayer i think it people that that used to hear us pray i think it would be embarrassing that you kneel down and whisper just a few moments and get back up maybe it's because my head's all stopped up and i couldn't hear you but i declare it didn't sound like much praying this morning and tonight take a prayer request and kneel down for just a minute or two and you're back up sitting down again amen some kind of way i don't know if you're ashamed to pray in front of your husband or in front of your wife if you are you need to move on the opposite side of the church if you're ashamed to pray by your children i don't know what it is but we need to not be ashamed we need to when we our knees hit that floor we need to cry out to god and have a prayer meeting amen and get some noise going. Hallelujah. I can show you in the Bible where when they prayed, it was noise to broad and the place was shaken. Hallelujah. And people were moved and there was something going on while prayer meeting was taking place. It wasn't just a little whispering and mumbling and down there just kind of silent praying. Silent prayer was not discovered in a Pentecostal church. Silent prayer is Methodist. Prayer one at a time is Baptist. And everybody praying out loud all together is apostolic Pentecost. Amen. Everybody praying out loud all at one time is apostolic Pentecost. We're not Methodists and we're not Baptists. I'm not criticizing them. Neither am I going to join them. Amen. I'm telling you, hallelujah, you need to rediscover how to pray. How to pray out loud. Your children won't never learn to pray if all you do is whisper. Hallelujah. So we need to not be ashamed. Don't be so sensitive about it. Don't be so secretive about it. This Holy Ghost, uh, the Apostle Paul said, this wasn't done in a corner. This is not something that we kind of, we're not some kind of a uh, clique or some kind of a, a cult. 
that we have secret meetings and we bring all our people together and we have our own little secret rules here and we don't want the outsiders to know what's going on in here. Amen. I would to God that we could open these walls up and everybody within three miles could hear us singing and praying and hooping and hollering and see us running and jumping and praising the Lord. That everybody that walks or drives by here, hallelujah, could see the hands waving and the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. I would to God that everything we do, amen, the whole world could know how wonderful and glorious it is. Don't be ashamed of what God's done for you. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Be a testimony and let it be a praise and honor to the name of the Lord Jesus. Would you stand? Praise God. What the Lord has done for me, I can recommend it to everybody. Amen. I'm not ashamed of what the Lord has done for me. I'm not ashamed of the life that God has given me. I'm not ashamed of the name of the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. What God's done for me would be good for anybody. The miracle that God's worked in my life. Amen. To do anybody good. Praise God. And if God loves me, he loves them and he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this Sunday night, I beg you in the name of Jesus. Amen. To cast your lot with the people of God. Hallelujah. Make up your mind tonight. Amen. I can't save myself. There's no way else for me to turn. I need to get in that altar and repent of my sins. And I need to say, God, amen, I give myself to you. Take my life. Hallelujah. And arrange it according to your plan. Amen. Arrange my life according to your plan. Lord, I turn it all over to you. I want to live my life for you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to do your will and serve you. Praise God. While the church is praying, I wonder who would be first to walk out here tonight. You'd walk out here and kneel in this altar and say, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to repentance. I'm coming to seek you tonight, Lord. I want to be saved tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to live my life without God. I'm coming to be saved. Amen. Write my name in your book, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray, church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, friend, we recommend Jesus to you. We recommend this Holy Ghost to you. We recommend this good life to you. We recommend Jesus to you. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Come on, sinner, backslider, come to Jesus tonight. I need Him. Oh, I need Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we need the Lord. Every hour, I need Him. Oh, bless Is there somebody else tonight? Is there somebody else? Join these children seeking the Lord tonight. Have we talked to you about something you need? Have we told you about a Savior that would be good in your life? Have we talked to you about a life that would be worth living? Amen. Would you trade what you have for what Jesus can offer? Why don't you come on to Him tonight? Why don't you come on to the Lord tonight in Jesus' name? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We cannot make that decision for you. It's our job to tell you about it and be sure you understand how good it is and encourage you to make that choice. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want some of you that's thankful for what God has done in your life. I want you to come. Amen. Stand here and lift your hands and begin to praise the Lord for it. Hallelujah. All this week, you're going to try to let your light shine. Amen. You want the Holy Ghost just shine through you. Just shine through you. The glow, the presence of God. Hallelujah. And everywhere you go, you'd like to be an influence. You'd like to leave a blessing. You'd like to be an influence wherever you go and whoever you talk to. That you can leave a good testimony, a good influence. Hallelujah. You'd like to talk to somebody this week. You'd like to be a blessing to somebody this week. Amen. You'd like to be a witness. Hallelujah. An example of the goodness of God. How good Jesus is. What a good life it is.
that's living for the Lord. Praise God. You'd like to let the world know that living for God is a good life. The happy life is in Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We give Jesus a good recommendation tonight. This Holy Ghost life, we verify, we certify it, we testify to it. Amen. That it's better than anything the world has to offer. Living for Jesus is the best life to live. There's nothing like living for God. Hallelujah. Oh, we're glory, we're glory, we're glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, let it shine. Let the glory of God show in your life. Praise God. Plant the seed wherever you go. Tell somebody, show to somebody. Let somebody know. Heaven, let somebody know the love of God. Plant the seed of truth and encouragement. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Where Jesus gave me the Holy Ghost. I'm going to let it shine Well, Jesus gave me the Holy Ghost I'm going to let it shine Jesus gave me the Holy Ghost I'm going to let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Well, Jesus gave me the Holy Ghost I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go, everywhere I go. I got all inspired. I told Brother Mason, I said, that'd be good for us to sing. <laughs> I, I felt excited about clapping my hands and stomping my feet and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to invite the ushers at this time to get ready to receive the offering. Praise the Lord. And Brother Anthony has a couple of songs that uh, people direct for during this time. Praise, praise the Lord. While they're doing that, we're going to give you a chance to praise the Lord while they're getting ready. Who would like to praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Will there be another one? Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. I think it'd be in order at this time to have Brother Anthony come around and make a little announcement. If you don't mind, Brother Anthony, would you come make the announcement we talked about this afternoon? 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Concerning some new things for the band and things of that nature. Just before he directs the orchestra. Those of you who have not been playing in the orchestra, please be at practice Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We have brand new music, different music than we've ever played before. And please, if you're going to play in the orchestra, you need to come at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. If not, you're going to be left way, way behind. So please, be here. of the Holy Ghost. That's what's going to change our world. Do not tell me that God does not have power to deliver you, to change you, to heal you, to set you free. I see the Spirit Santo llena mi otra vez. Espíritu Santo, prepara me para la venida del Señor Jesucristo. 
And I want to tell you it's a portrait of what God imagined his church to be. Different colors, different places, hallelujah. But we're all together for one purpose, for one cause. And when the oil begins to flow, you can be sure that the power of God will be at We've got to have prayer and we've got to have fasting. We've got to preach the Holy Ghost. That's what will change people's lives. That's what will give us spiritual power. We've got to be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm coming out in the power of the Spirit. I know what my purpose is. It's time to get out of the box. It's time to shake a world. It's time to believe God for the miraculous. It's time to believe for a worldwide revival. What do you want in your city? Then believe it and claim it in Jesus' name. We've been bought by His blood, filled with His Spirit, and we're not ashamed to testify. Can you lift up your hands where you are right now? Can you lift up your hands where you are? Lord Jesus, right now, I am praying for the power of God to come upon your people. I am praying that there would be peace, that there would be joy, that there would be hope, that there would be life, that there would be no more suffering, that there would be no more deaths, but that you would be glorified in every heart, every mind, every spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless these people now. It was the first time we had really seen more than a peaceful vibe. If we're together and we have the same spirit and the same attitude, we're going to do things for the Lord. The whole world's going to get this whole gospel when the church begins to come together and be I'm telling you that God has already positioned the elements of a revival to shake your city. God is already speaking to people that you don't even know about. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.